Hey guys, uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about today's uh, three-game EPL slate. Uh, just a heads up, um, this is going to be the last week of EPL soccer. Um, Sunday, I believe, is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's going to be a 10-game slate because that's going to be the last day of the EPL soccer. So that's going to be a fun, fun, fun GPP slate, in my opinion, and probably a lot of selections for cash as well. But it's going to be a fun slate. Um, you know, that's that is the biggest soccer slate that we will ever get, you know, for the rest of the year. So, yeah, get excited. I'll have a preview video of the, for that slate probably on Saturday um, just to go over each game and then uh, what kind of motivation each team has. But yeah, but let's dive into today's uh, mini three game slate, but the prize pools are pretty good. So I decided to create a video. Um, but as always, if once the starters come out around like 2 a 2 p.m., 1 45 p.m. Eastern time, I will share my um, thoughts on the on the starter confirmation. But without further ado, let's dive into the three game slate. So the first game, actually, let's just go over the overview. So the clear favorite here on, on this slate is Chelsea at home because Chelsea does need to win um, to compete against Tottenham in the champ for the Champions League spot. And I'll kind of show you the standings for that. And then Everton is a favorite also at home at minus 120 against Crystal Palace. And then Aston Villa and Burnley are it's more of a toss up. Um, but Aston Villa has has, you know, has a pretty high upside, in my opinion, to uh, score a lot of goals, but then Burnley also has to kind of win uh, to stay out of the relegation zone. So yeah, let's dive in. So Everton versus Crystal Palace, and I apologize, my webcam broke yesterday, so I and I'm not you know able to use that today, but I will have it fixed by uh, Saturday's video. So Everton, uh, let's go into the Chelsea matchup first because that's the biggest favorite, the home favorite. So if you see on the standings here, Chelsea has 70 points. Um, they need to play one more game to kind of go even with Man City, Liverpool, and Tottenham, who all have played 37 games already. So Chelsea really needs to win this. If they tie, I mean, they'll be at 71 points, um, but it's not quite safe, in my opinion. Like, if they lose today, um, and then if Tottenham wins next game, and then Chelsea ties or loses next game. Tottenham could overtake the third spot on the standings. So top three finish is pretty good. Um, top four finish is pretty good, actually. And top three finish is really good. So I think that's going to be the motivation for Chelsea to try hard. But then Leicester has been on the up uptick, um, really, um, the, winning the last two games. Um, Chelsea has been up and down, as you see. Win, draw, loss, draw, win. Um so yeah, it's gonna be a good game, I think, and and I think James, I fully expect James Madison to start for Leicester City, which hugely increases Leicester City's chances to win, um, to compete against Chelsea. But Chelsea will bring, like I said, full squad, full throttle today, full efforts, I think. Um, and it all starts with Mason Mount, and then their fullbacks. So Mount and Alonso and Reese James probably to start there. And then after that, it's all strict, you know, strictly up to GPP based on pricing and based on goal upside, based on your game narrative that you think will happen. But like I said, I think Leicester City has been playing much better lately. So I, aside from those three play players, I don't know if I'll play any of those guys because I feel like there are better play, uh, player, better plays in the other matches, in my opinion. So that's where I'll start. But if you think Chelsea will score a lot of goals, which I don't think they will, but if you think they'll score a lot of goals, I mean, Lukaku and Pulisic, um, I know he scored one goal last game, but Lukaku um, has not been in the best form this season, but, you know, they could be on the end of a, 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 a goal. But Jorginho takes penalty kicks as well, so there's the penalty kick upside. But yeah, aside from that, I'm not interested in any of the three uh, fullbacks either. And then for Leicester City, if you think they will play well and actually score goals, I mean, I think James Madison is a staple, in my opinion, even though they have a tough matchup. I think he's been in really great form lately. I mean, as you see, he had one goal and two assists and then a goal in the game before that. So, I mean, he's been really good. Um, Leicester City honestly could have used them. 
probably in the last month or so. Um, and maybe they could have finished the top seven in top seven, but anyway, so Madison and then Vardy has been lights out as well, scoring two goals in each of this last two games. Um, so yeah, I think Madison and Vardy connection is pretty potent right now. Um, but so aside from that, I would go for GPP Barnes, Dewsbury Hall, and then Albrighton and Telemans have some upside, but not as much as Barnes and Dewsbury Hall. And then Everton is the next biggest favorite on the slate at home at minus 120 over Crystal Palace. Um, let's see how they have been faring the last five games or so. Um, really up and down. And Everton, ooh, Everton really has to win this game. Uh, as you see that they are in the danger of relegation, potential relegation. If they lose today, they'll sit at 36 points. And then Burnley, ooh, if Burnley wins somehow today, um, I don't know if they will. They could. Um, they're either win or loss team, as you see here. So Everton really has to win this game. Crystal Palace doesn't really have that much to play for today. They're out of the relegation zone. They're safe from that. And they don't really have the potential to go finish in top 10. Um yeah, so I think Everton's going to be very motivated to play. So Everton, it all starts with Richarlison, Anthony Gordon, and then is, uh, what's his name, injured? Where is he? Why am I blanking on his name? The other winger, Demar Gray. Yeah, I don't know where Demari Gray is on this projected starters, um, but I would start with Gordon and Demari Gray, who's not pictured here, and then Richarlison. Um, after that, I mean, it's all strictly GPP. Mikolenko and then with UOB on the full uh, on the on the side um, on the wings. I mean, they've been playing much better lately, so I think that's gonna be interesting. But I would, like I said, I would start with Gordon and Demari Gray, especially Demari Gray. He's been playing well. Maybe he's injured. It's not showing up here. But um, I think Everton should fully dominate today's uh, game here today. And then for GPP, yeah, I mean, like I said, um, for Crystal Palace, if you think they'll play much better this time around for whatever reason, um, Zaha and Gallagher uh, would be the picks in my opinion. And then the last game, which is going to be probably a snooze fest. Uh, I think Burnley is going to shore up on defense. Um, they're going to really try to try their best to win this game against Aston Villa to come out of the relegation zone. Um, if they get 37 points and 35 points, I mean, that will tie them up with leads. Um, so really, Burnley really, really does need this game badly. So... Burnley will give their best. Let's see who they lost to the last couple games. Tottenham, good team. Um, Aston Villa. Excuse me. Are they playing again? Yeah. And you see Aston Villa beat Burnley away on the road by a lot. And possession was dominated by... Aston Villa, but about the same. So I do think Burnley will play a little bit better than the last head-to-head. -head. Um, but Aston Villa is, I mean, is a good team as well. So, I mean, but but for Burnley, it starts with McNeil and Brownhill and then Cornet. Cornet has been up and down, but he has the potential to break the slate, in my opinion. Um, so Cornet, McNeil, and Brownhill, and then one of the maybe a strikers. But Aston Villa is not bad either. Obviously, Coutinho leading the way, and then Lucas Digne taking a lot of set pieces, crossing the ball. So Coutinho, Digne are probably two of my favorite pieces. And then after that, really strictly for GPP, Ings has been out of form, in my opinion. So I wouldn't play him, but maybe Watkins if I um, had a choice between the two strikers. So I think this is going to be an interesting matchup, and I do think Burnley will try their best, um, which kind of lowers the upside for Aston Villa. So, yeah, um, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, but for, like, cash optimal settings, yeah, I mean, I would have to go with Mount and maybe the fullbacks of Chelsea and then James Madison. Um, and then for Everton, from Everton, maybe Gordon or Damari Gray, who's not pictured here, like I said. 
Um, and after that, I mean, I don't know if I'll have any pieces from Aston Villa, maybe Digne, maybe Coutinho, and then for Brum Burnley, maybe the cheap fullbacks there. But anyway, so yeah, that's kind of kind of like what I'm thinking. If you guys have any questions, let, let me know. I can be reached on Twitter, um, YouTube, or disc or, or Discord. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and good luck, everybody. Like I said, I will share uh, my thoughts on the starters um, before the game. So anyway, thanks, everybody.